All right, so let's just, we'll do the first part of the first chapter here, security and risk management. So we're going to do this, security terms and security governance principles, and there's a bunch more to do next time. All right, so this is the fundamental definition of security. This took a couple of decades to work out, as various models went by we'll talk about. But it, we, uh, information security community decided that for computer security, you have three things you want. Confidentiality, availability, and integrity. Those are the three things you want. That's why they call it the CIA. And you can't have all three of them without spending an awful lot of money. You can't have equal, a large amount of all three. What you typically do is you decide which one is more important to you. So in a public classroom on campus where students can just walk in and use the machines, we have high availability, but there's not much confidentiality because another student could come in and see what the previous student typed on the machines. And there's not much integrity. One student could like install a virus on the machines and that might stay there until it reboots so the machine might operate strangely. So you, you can choose which one of these is more important in your environment. Um, if you're handling military secrets, then of course you have very high to focus on confidentiality and it's not important to make it, not as important as availability. So that's the issue. Anyway, um, so another way to look at it, you can also talk about the opposite. If you don't have integrity, then you're allowing unauthorized users to alter things. If you don't have availability, then unauthorized users can destroy things or render them unavailable. And if you don't have confidentiality, then unauthorized users can disclose information. So those are the opposites of these desirable security properties. So confidentiality means that unauthorized people cannot read data that's confidential. So you prevent read access. Uh, so a typical attack is the theft of personally identifiable information like credit card information that then is exposed to unauthorized people. That's a breach. HIPAA, for example, is the requirement for medical providers to keep their information private. And they have to have a HIPAA compliance office. And if they get hacked and that personal information gets out, then they have had a uh, failure to comply here and there may be punishments. So data should only be available to users who have clearance, if you're in a sort of military scenario where you have top secret and secret and such, and access approval and a need to know. This is called a vertical control clearance and need to know is called a horizontal control. You have a certain area you're supposed to know about. So even if you have top secret clearance, but the information is about Israel and you're not in charge of an area covering Israel, you wouldn't have access to the Israeli top secret information because you're not focusing in that area. That would be the horizontal need to know control. Integrity, make sure that the data has not been altered by an unauthorized user. And so you prevent unauthorized subjects from making modifications. You prevent authorized subjects from making mistakes or unauthorized modifications. And you maintain consistency of objects so the data is correct. This is something you enforce in databases with uh, referential integrity is the term for this, uh, making sure that a database does not uh, end up in an inconsistent situation, like, for example, having two different people entered with the same social security number or the same ID number for your company. Uh, that would be a failure to maintain consistency of your database. So access controls protect integrity so people don't get right access unless they have logged into an account with that privileges. Therefore, you have to authenticate people to know who they are. Intrusion detection systems detect if attacks are coming over the wire. And activity logging records what people do. So if somebody somehow manages to do a bad thing, you can go back later and figure out what they did and who did it. <coughs> Validating object integrity helps prevent uh, failure of integrity by preventing changes that would make the data invalid, like putting alphabetic data in a numeric field. And encryption and hashing are other controls here uh, that help prevent unauthorized users from making changes. And hashing in particular makes it easier to detect changes. Storing a hash of something, you can compare it later and see if that file, for example, has changed because you observed that the hash is different. So here's common integrity attacks, viruses, logic bombs, errors, malicious modifications, backdoors. All these involve changing the data stored on somewhere to be something other than what it should be by someone who is not authorized to do that. Availability. Uh, your systems are available when authorized users can use them as they should to do their job. If they're, if they're unavailable to your authorized users, then you have a lack of availability. So uh, Denial of service attacks are network attacks that make things unavailable. 
typically by flooding the uh, bandwidth of the network provider connection so it's frozen. And also you can have the problem of single points of failure. If you do not design your network with redundant systems, then when one device fails like a router, a whole bunch of your stuff becomes unavailable. And you fix that by redesigning your network to have alternates so that when one device fails, another device can take over and maintain availability. So here's threats to availability. Failure and errors, of course. Um, then heat, flooding, power loss, that sort of thing. And of course, denial of service attacks where someone deliberately sends some kind of malicious traffic to your network. And human errors. Humans often make mistakes. Moving, unplugging things, turning things off, uh, reformatting the wrong drive, that sort of thing. Uh, most outages are caused by the errors from your own staff, not from attacks from the outside. All right, so there are controls to make things available. Uh, you can have uh, intermediate delivery systems, so there are routers and proxies to limit the amount of traffic hitting your central devices. Access controls limit what people can do, so people can't change the settings on your routers and such. Monitor performance. Have redundant systems and backups, so that if a device fails, another device can take over. And backups mean you can restore things. If there's a total collapse, like a building burns down, then you have a backup and you can restore on new servers and get back up. Uh, business continuity planning and fault tolerance, which we'll talk a lot more about, is the management process of planning for all the bad things that might impair our business and how we are going to survive it by a variety of techniques. And fault tolerant systems are systems that are redundant, so even when one device fails, which is a fault, it does not lead to a failure because the users continue to receive service. So you don't have just one server, you have a server cluster, and if one server fails, the other servers continue to provide service to the users. That's a fault tolerant system. <coughs> so there's no such thing as perfect security. If you want if you increase one of the CIA, you decrease the others unless you spend more total money to set up the system. And so that's the game. For example, if you want more confidentiality, you might have long complex passwords, and then you have less availability because more often your legitimate users will forget their password or type them in wrong, so you irritate your legitimate users is the cost. You're going to lower the availability is the price for having more confidentiality. So here's some other controls like auditing is measuring um, technical operation of a system or application, and accounting is logging what happens here. Uh, these are both important. And there are another five elements of security. Identification is claiming to be someone, for example, by typing in your username. Authentication is proving you are that person by adding some kind of evidence that you're really the right person, like a password. Once you've done that, proven who you are, then authorization is the decision that now you have proven who you are, here's what you're allowed to do. You are a normal user, so you're allowed to do some things. You're the administrator, so you're allowed to do more things, that sort of thing. Auditing records a log of what you do, and uh, auditing, in fact, is testing. Yeah, this is a valuable job in compliance, is a compliance auditor, a person that just constantly prepares reports and measures systems to see if you're doing all the things you should be doing. And accounting uh, reviews log files. Uh, one thing you have to do <coughs> is an account of high privilege, an audit of high privilege accounts. What the administrators can typically do all sorts of very dangerous things, like erase data, modify data, create new user accounts, and things like that. So you have to record what administrators do, and then have a step where you check to see what have our administrators been doing. Have they been doing bad things that violate our security policy? Because our normal security controls would be easy for them to avoid. And uh, all right, then there's AAA services that have been around since the uh, old dial-up telephone days. Authentication, authorization, and accounting. And the point of these is to make sure that the people using your network are logged in and record what they do so you can calculate their phone bill. And it applies the same for computer services. These three things go together and are part of uh, any corporate network. So here's an example of accounting. Uh, there was a woman called Octomom that had eight kids, and somebody in the hospital accessed her records and I think sold it to like a tabloid magazine. And that's a serious breach of medical confidentiality. And that's why you need to record what your people are doing. Because even your people might be authorized to look at medical records, and yet they might do something wrong looking at those records. And then you'll wish you had kept good logs of what they did so you can find out who did the bad thing and uh, punish them appropriately and react correctly to it. So let's try one of these cahoots. 
All right, this is 1A. Uh, host live, I think, is what I want. Like everybody in tech, they keep moving things around to change the names of things just to make everything crazy. All right, so go to kahoot.it and type in that number and a name, and you can play this game. You don't have to do it, but it's worth extra credit if you are a winner. Looks like we got everybody that's coming. <coughs> All right, so a hacker defaces your home page. What has gone wrong here? That's a failure of integrity. Uh, somebody unauthorized has changed the data. All right. All right. What do fault tolerant systems improve? Also called high availability systems. High fault tolerant systems means that even when a component breaks, it continues to provide service, so you have more availability. All right. <coughs> so, what's a username for? That's identification. It username is just claiming to be somebody. It doesn't prove it though. That would be authentication, but it's just identification, claiming to be somebody. All right, if there are errors in data entry, what's gone wrong? Again, that's a failure of integrity. The data is not correct. All right, what's an access control list for? That's authorization. You have to know who people are, and they would have had to prove it with authentication, with a password or something, and then you have a list of what they're allowed to do. That's authorization. All right, so here are the winners. All right, and uh, you'll have to tell me who you are if you're using a fake name and you want to get credit. Um, I think I know who Tark is from the past, but uh, Hacker Kitty and S SW, anyway, if you want, you get three points every time you win this thing. If you tell me who you are, 
Anyway, um, I want to step away for a few minutes. Let's take a 10-minute break, and then I'll finish up here. It's just about 6.40. I'll be back at 6.50.